Hello, welcome. This is Africa in 10 minutes, where we bring to you trending business news from around the continent, COSI footprint to Africa. My name is Mark Messikeno. Let's get straight into the stories for this week. Nigeria raises $300 million from first ever diaspora bond. Leverage urbanization to accelerate industrialization 2017 economic report on Africa. President Zuma to convene BEE workshop on economic transformation. Europe's Reconstruction Bank grants Egypt 290 million euros for rail sector development. Etisalat, Nigeria to lose trading name as parent company pulls out. Julius Berger diversifies into oil industry. Kenyan WOW Beverages enters mass market with Danish beer. And now, the news in details. Nigeria's first ever diaspora bond was launched on Monday and was considered a resounding success after raising $300 million. The bond has a five-year tenure and was offered at a coupon rate of 5.625%. The Director General of a Debt Management Office, Dr. Abraham Mwankwa, revealed that the diaspora bond was 130% subscribed. He further confirmed that it was targeted principally at Nigerians abroad to provide them with the opportunity to contribute to a national development, a report by this day confirmed. The diaspora bond has opened a new source of financing for the federal government of Nigeria for funding projects for the development of the country, Dr. Wangfo said in a statement released on Monday. This new window further enhances funding liquidity and flexibility of a Nigerian economy which unnecessary characteristics as the country gathers momentum towards the attainment of advanced economy status. The 2017 Economic Report on Africa, ERA, which highlights key policy priorities for consideration to ensure that the continent's urbanization supports its industrialization has been launched. The theme of this year's edition of the flagship publication of Economic a Commission for Africa, ECA, is Urbanization and Industrialization for Africa's Transformation. For urbanization to connect with industrialization, state policy and presence are inevitable. A viable industrial policy that identifies and taps into urban resources with strategic urban planning is central in making urbanization work for industrialization, noted ECA director for the sub-regional office for Southern Africa, Saeed Adejumobi. South Africa's president, Jacob Zuma, will on Tuesday, the 20th of June 2017, convened the Black Economic Empowerment Advisory Council workshop focusing on radical socio-economic transformation in Pretoria. The workshop will, amongst others, address the systematic and structural implementation challenges of the broad-based Black Economic Empowerment Act and the proposed recommendations to realize a government's objectives on radical socio-economic transformation. The workshop will be attended by members of the BEE Advisory Council, chairpersons and CEOs of major organs of states, as well as experts on the subject matters contained in the proposals. The Egyptian National Railways, ENR, will use a 290 million euro financing package from the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development to expand its fleet and upgrade its services. The funding will go towards the acquisition of up to 100 new diesel locomotives under an outsourced supply and maintenance contract as part of ENR's locomotive renewal program. ENR has an old fleet with an average of 30 years, which has caused a lack of availability as well as maintenance and carbon emission challenges. New locomotives will enable the railway company to provide a more reliable and higher quality service, create jobs, lower carbon emissions and deliver additional revenue due to better availability and save operating costs through improved fuel consumption. 
construction magnate Julius Berger has entered into a strategic joint venture partnership with oil firm Petralon Energy that will see both parties team up to develop oil wells in Nigeria. This move signals that Julius Berger is intent on exploring businesses within the oil and gas space industry. The construction firm made its intention to strike this partnership with Petralon in a notice sent to the Nigerian Stock Exchange on Monday. For Julius, this presents an attractive opportunity to ease pressures mounting from stiff competition in the Nigerian construction industry, particularly from China. In recent years, Chinese construction firms have gained a significant foothold in the Nigerian market, landing lucrative construction contracts from the country's federal and state governments. Nigeria's fourth largest telecommunication company, Atisalat Nigeria, may lose its trading name after its UAE-based parent company, Atisalat UAE, pulled out of the troubled telco. Atisalat Nigeria has confirmed it is working on changes to its shareholding structure following the exit. Its Abu Dhabi parent company, Atisalat UAE, owned by Mubadala Holdings, had this morning informed the Abu Dhabi Stock Exchange that it was divesting completely from Nigeria. This forces Etisalat Nigeria to begin exploring the option of a new trading name as it's set to lose the rights to the name Etisalat with the pullout. Etisalat Nigeria has been on months for lockdown with negotiations with a consortium of commercial lenders over a $1.2 billion loan. The telco took the loan to show up its infrastructure and enhance operational activities, but has struggled to meet repayment. This is a key factor behind the divestment. Kenyan Beverages Marketing Company, WOW Beverages, has entered a distribution partnership with a canned Danish beer, Fax Beer, in Kenya. Fax is manufactured by Denmark's second largest brewer, Royal Unibrew, which produces, sells, and distributes quality beer, malt and beverage soft drinks, cider, and long drinks globally. Fax Beer portfolio includes a Fax Stout, Fax 10% and Fax Premium, which come in 500 ml cans. WW Beverages Chief Executive Officer Chris Lucas said, This partnership is a strategic step towards the growth of our beer category and goes a long way into our broader strategy of offering a complete portfolio of brands across the consumer chain. WW was the first private company to import wines and spirits into Kenya. Its spirits portfolio includes, amongst others, Jack Daniels, Famous Grouse, Macallan Bacardi and Martini, and Catena from Argentina, Douglas Green from South Africa, JP Chenet from France, Gato Negro from Chile, and Tomasi from Italy make up WW Beverages wine selection. <music> On that note, we conclude this week's trending stories. Stay tuned for a recap of our stories. Nigeria raises $300 million from first ever diaspora bond. Leverage urbanization to accelerate industrialization 2017 economic report on Africa. President Zuma to convene BEE workshop on economic transformation. Europe's Reconstruction Bank grants Egypt 290 million euros for rail sector development. Etisalat Nigeria to lose trading name as parent company pulls out. Julius Berger diversifies into oil industry. Kenyan WOW Beverages enters mass market with Danish beer. For questions, comments, or to keep up with the trend in business news, stay connected. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and connect with us on LinkedIn. These news and reports are called from Footprint to Africa. For daily updates and more business news in Africa, visit www.footprinttoafrica.com today. Footprint to Africa, business news made in Africa by Africans.